Hey you guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be about how to draw tiger lilies. These flowers are so, were so tricky for me to figure out actually because there are two different kinds that I've seen and I could not decide which one I wanted to represent. So you'll kind of, I'll kind of walk you through my struggles and fails a little bit just because I think they're so funny and I, I feel like, you know, they might be encouraging to see that even, even though I'm trying to teach you how to draw these flowers, sometimes they don't always come that easy to me either but I do my best and I'm just gonna kind of show you guys how I draw the tiger lily thanks to Stacy for suggesting this flower it was definitely a very stretching experience for me so I just appreciate the fact that you chose a surprisingly trickier flower to draw but don't let this intimidate you my whole point in talking about how it was difficult for me was just to be able to tell you I figured out a way to simplify the whole thing <laughs> So it'll be more approachable after watching this video, I hope. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. Bear with my voice in this video. I am recovering from a cold and also I um, have allergies. Okay, so as always, I'm going to pull up a reference picture of Tiger Lily. Not that Tiger Lily, Fran. Come on, Peter Pan. This Tiger Lily. So there are two different kinds that I've seen, like I was saying earlier. Um, one kind looks like this. And it's kind of like, I think that's the Asian kind. And I tried drawing it, and it just wasn't happening for me. <laughs> I was so stressed out when I was doing this. I was like laughing at myself because I'm like, man, girlfriend, you're sitting here trying to teach people how to draw flowers and you can't even do it. So I chose this flower to draw. It's a tiger lily. I think it's called a Saskatchewan tiger lily, maybe, I think. So anyway, that's the one that I chose to draw. It's really similar. Stacy. I hope that that's okay with you and you weren't hoping that I was going to draw the jellyfish looking one. So I start off with just a small circle on the inside and the tiger lily is pretty symmetrical. There are six petals and they all end in kind of a point. If I draw it where it looks like it does not end in a point, that's because the petals are also curved. And so that's just a piece of the flower where the petal is curling backwards. So I'm starting this with pencil just because I think this is a way, this is the best way to approach this flower because there's a lot of overlap and things like that. And so it really helps you decide which parts of the flower you want in the front. Another thing about tiger lilies are that they have um, six stamen in the middle. Those just grow straight from that circle that I drew at the beginning. So that circle is not really going to show up at the end. It's just going to be the stamen. So I'm just erasing lines that are going to be overlap, kind of deciding how I want the flower to end up. Maybe I want this piece to be overlapped. And I'm just, I'm continually looking back at that picture. And I know that the petals, based off the picture of this tiger lily and how lilies are shaped, the petals are going to swoop into the center. And so I'm adding some depth there with my pencil. Um, and then it has like this little bulb underneath in the back. So I made sure to represent that. And then here are the leaves. Really simple leaves. They grow in pairs, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just making some final choices about that and then switching over to my micron pen. Same one I always use. And now this time I'm going to start in the center. And I'm going to draw in all the stamen. What's really beautiful about the stamen are the way that they taper as they come up. At the end of it, there's that little little bulb piece. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> and that's where all the pollen is, you know, with flowers. And then there's like that middle part as well. There's like a... I need to learn some technical terms, guys. I just need to. So anyway, did you see my finger? Did you see my hand? It was so weird. I need to put that down. So now I'm going to go ahead and fill in the petals. Some of the shapes I was not too into, so I adjusted them slightly. That's what's good about starting with pencil. You can kind of make adjustments like that. 
And so those are the general shapes of the tiger lily. I add extra lines to show where the flower has folded upward. And then I'm just going to go ahead and trace over the leaves and the stem. Now tiger lilies definitely grow in bunches, in like clusters, but I just thought I would break down how to draw just one today. And then the leaves, similar to the zinnias from last week, or two weeks ago, the leaves have those vertical lines like this. And I decided to fill those in before just because it's quick and easy and I don't have to think too much about it. So I'm going to erase all of those pencil marks. It's going to look a lot cleaner, um, a lot less confusing for when you add in your details and shading. The center is going to be dark because those petals are dipping into the middle where the stamen are coming out. And, um, and I'm just using some curved lines to create shape like this and also some shorter lines to create some dimension and texture. I'm sorry that you couldn't see this part, that was totally my bad. But I'm just going about this doing the same thing I always do with these, uh, with the shading. But yeah, you can see how I shaded it kind of in the center there just because it's kind of curving. It's curving inward and I wanted to show that. Don't be afraid to rotate your paper as well because that'll help you get the right angles for the curves. This back bulb section I'm definitely going to make dark because it's behind. And then the iconic part of the tiger lily are these beautiful spots that it has. So this isn't for shading, this is actually just detail of the petal. And so I'm just going in and adding these dots that are so precious and so characteristic for this flower. All right, that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it helpful um, and all that good stuff. I'm coming to a close with this flower drawing series. So after I finish creating all of the requests, I'm gonna go back to some handwriting, hand lettering sorts of things. And hopefully we'll be incorporating different elements from this floral series to add accents to the hand lettering and things like that. So anyway, so any um, I will be back back I will be back next week with a new video for you. Yeah, if you like this video, um, tell your friends about it, share it with them, show them that, you know, everybody <laughs> struggles when when doing new things and learning how to draw new flowers. And so I just hope you guys found this video helpful and I will see you next week. I love you guys. Thanks so much for your support um, and I'll talk to you soon. Oh, and if you try to draw this flower, <laughs> Um, after all of this rambling, if you try to draw this flower, um, be sure to tag me at Authentic Franny on Instagram. I love that you guys tag me in your comments. That's all well and good, but it's really helpful if you tag me in the photo itself. That way I can find your art. Sometimes the comments will get lost, but I can always go back and find the photos that I'm tagged in, obviously, on Instagram. So be sure to tag me in the photo. All right, you guys, have a great week and weekend, and, um, bye. <laughs> Ugh. <sighs>